Welcome to another Death Head Dice painting tutorial. This time we're looking at Weathering Drago, the Kador Heavy Warjack. So as we had Dra Drago from the end of our last part, which is a link at the end of the video, we're to the weathering or, or adding bruises, bumps and such. And because Drago is a character jack, he's seen lots of battles and they've actually modeled a lot of these scratches and dents on the model for us, which makes it a lot easier. And what we're going to do in this video is we're going to supplement that with the uh, what I like to use as the, the, the foam or sponge technique. So what you see here is just a piece of the foam that comes in the back of the War Machine figures, the Peter figures. And what I like to do is just tear off a small chunk and try to make sure it's as um, Un as ununiformed as possible. Basically, uh, make sure it looks all sort of uh, jagged and such. Because we're going to use this to sponge on some paint, and having the the different shapes and having the ununiformed uh, patterns will actually make add a little bit of realism to it. So I use my finger, tweezers, whatever I can to get that sort of a, a, a jaggedy, uh, ununiformed shape. So once I've got that and fought with the static electricity. I'll take in my tweezers and then I what I do is I'll mix it with a little bit of uh, I take a little bit of gray paint in this case I'm using the Vallejo green gray uh, at a one-to-one -one ratio if you're using regular any dark colored paint you can use black but I find gray works better for me um, just make sure you thin it enough because you want it really thin dry the sponge as much as you would like your dry brushing and then just basically dab it all over uh, where you think there's going to be wears and tears and, and scrapes and such um, obviously you're going to see a lot more of it on the edges so focus a little more and now you can, you can see in a couple places there I actually almost use it like a brush to get those edges covered and what this does is it's going to add a 3D effect but at the same time it gives you an idea um, it adds a nice random effect to it I found if I painted stuff on myself I was never happy with the placement so because I always want to wind up getting too much too sym symmetrical so by having the sponge it gives me a little bit more freedom so next step I'm going to take some of the Vallejo steel and fit, start by filling in some of the cracks and then now I'm going to start going over the gray. Now if you see on the left there, what you want to do is you want to fill the silver in as much over the gray as possible, but you're leaving that outer edge and that's going to give that perception of depth. So I used uh, the Vallejo steel, which is a very bright uh, metal, as my first layer, but I'm going to go back with some of the rust effects and such afterwards. And, and it's nice if it's bright, it almost looks like uh, if you don't go over it with the rust effects, it's going to look like um, a fresher, a more recent uh, uh, attack or damage to them to the model so I've had success with this on a few of the other things in my uh, my arc plane and Warhammer I've done the same thing so so now it's this is the to be honest this is a bit tedious <laughs> it, um, it does take a bit of time to go through and catch all those little little bashes and, and dents that you've done with the sponge now if you don't catch them all it's nice because it actually makes it look like a little bit of dirt and dust so you're adding a, a it's almost a two for the stuff you get with the metal looks like the scratches the stuff it doesn't look just like it's dirty so um, I found that yeah I again using the Vallejo model layer paint it is it does need to be thin because you want it to really flow in those little areas um, I found it again this is a uh, a long process but in the end I think the results are well worth it rather than just globbing a bunch of paint on the areas so and you can you also catch all the stuff you miss as well I, I caught a few of the highlights that I wanted to catch after the uh, the oil wash had uh, dulled them down a bit from the from the previous video so spending this much time that close to the model and is uh, it'll, it helps you pick up the stuff that you missed and generally with the um, with the larger areas, I try to, uh, and again, I, I free, I'm doing a little bit of freehand here as well, and that's fine. It doesn't have to have the gray, um, again, because I'm going to go back with the, the rust in a little bit. Um, but you can do that, and just make sure you focus on the edges, make sure you get those in. fine with the Vallejo model air all the model air paints you still have to uh, thin it down after you're using it for a little bit of time because it does begin to dry out I would have tried the alcohol based paint but I find at least for me I don't have the same level of control because I can't use my good brushes I only have for the synthetic hair brushes which are recommended just because the uh, the paint is so is a little bit harsher on them because it's all alcohol based I find that uh, I don't have the same control but practice makes perfect so maybe I'll do that in the next one so we're on to the aluminum and basically following the same step as last time. That's what we've, we've the example on the left. So what you're going to do is you're going to fill in the, the 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 lightest silver, not quite a little bit less than the 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 the, the previous silver. You want to leave a little bit more of that space. That'll add to that uh, perception of depth. 
and uh, I didn't do it on all of them because some of them I know I'm going to go back and use the rust technique on so I want to make sure that it uh, I don't want to don't, don't actually need that extra depth in those um, but uh, very important uh, stay on the edges on these you want especially on the edges that's usually all you'll need is just to do like a highlight an edge highlight and I can't stress it enough take your time with this because if you rush through it doesn't look as good. I found, uh, I, for me, I find I really have to get the, uh, I take my time. This, I, with the camera in the way, I was, wasn't 100% happy with all of it, so I had to go back and fix some of it off camera to get the detail I want, but as long as you take the time. So now we're on to rust. Um, I use the Vallejo weathering pigments. I only have a couple of them, like an, an orangey brown and an orange, and just put a, a little bit of both of them into a cup with some water, and just went to town covering the model, focusing on the areas where I think I'd see some rust. You can be as um, ambitious, not ambitious, you can be as, I'm not sure the word I'm looking for. Generous, that's the word I'm looking for. Uh, you can be as generous as you want with the, the rust or, or, or not. I found, uh, I mean, this is a character jack that's been around for a couple hundred years. I figure he's going to have some rust on him, so... And to me, that look, it adds character. It looks like they've, uh, they've seen stuff or seen battles, they've gone through things, so... And I know Les likes the rest of the effect as well, so. And you can be a little bit more um, liberal with this, just because you can go back and remove this with just a little bit of a, like a, a, a cotton bud or a, uh, or even a wet uh, paintbrush, which we'll see in a few minutes. So you can be a little bit more generous and not worrying about it uh, making too many mistakes. So, so I've gone back with a wet, a wet brush. Now I found to get large areas off, it wasn't as good, so you can sometimes use your finger. I, the reason I went with the brush to begin with is because I wanted to clear out that area where we had the blue highlights to get that clear up. But I think I, I, I realized that, you know what, cotton bud's probably the better way of doing it. So just go in there, dampen a little bit, and just clean up some of the areas. Also use it to push some of the pigments around, so you, if you're finding it's not quite where you want, the excess can be moved in there and just go over the different areas, clean it all up. And at that point, you give it a quick coat of matte varnish, and you're done. So this is our completed Drago. I cleaned up the one axe on the left. It looks a little bad there, but I did clean that up in the in, before giving it back to Les. So thank you for watching. If you missed part one, just click on the link there. You can always click on the links to our other videos. We've got the Trollblood's Box to Battle, which I'm actually planning on uh, adding to in the next couple weeks, as well as our War Machine Horde Battle Reports, where you can actually see Drago in one of those battle reports. So thank you very much for watching. If you have any comments, suggestions, criticisms, etc., feel free to throw them in the comment section below. I, I do read them all and, uh, and even respond to them on occasion. Also, if you do like this video or the, the videos that we do, please click on like and on the uh, subscribe button. It lets us know that there's people wanting to see more of these things. Also, it helps us with the whole uh, YouTube promotional process and such. So the more likes we get, the more we get f into the feeds, which means more people see it. So we appreciate that. And once again, thank you very much for watching. And if you have any comments, throw them below. This is a secret outtake, secret outtake file. So don't tell less. As you can see, Drago took a bit of a spill. No. No. Secret outtake.